Welcome back on this Sunday morning. We're breaking down the election that was on Tuesday. Susan, uh, you said, listen, you watch the <laughs> national networks and none of them mentioning the Tennessee Republicans in the House at the national level picking up a seat, which was really crucial to the Republicans controlling the House of Representatives. And on election night, when you scroll across the bottom, as all the networks do, they mention Bill Lee as governor. Not once did I see Andy Ogles, the new congressman from the 5th District in Middle Tennessee. That was a district where Jim Cooper had represented the 5th, included all of Davidson County. Well, it County. was part of the district, and that's why Jim Cooper well, is not It's back. changed. It's been right. redistricted, but Cooper had, had represented all of Davidson County. Now there are three congressmen in Davidson County. But this new district was part of Davidson, part of Wilson, part of Rutherford, part of Murray, part uh, all of Murray, part of Lewis, and part of Williamson. A man named Andy Ogles, Republican, had been mayor of Murray County, won the primary and ran against a Democrat senator, Heidi Campbell. It was a fairly contested district, but the rural parts of the district are very Republican. And so Andy Ogles won, and it was a pickup of one vote in the U.S. House, which was critical. And no one has talked about it. And the the state of Tennessee moving. Well, to, we're now eight one. It's eight instead one. Eight of seven Republicans. Two. Eight Republicans, two. Eight right. Republicans to one Democrat instead of seven There's Republicans. One Democrat two. left in Memphis. So, right. Don, well, there was a time, and uh, I think it was seven two Democrat, and probably in the seventies. We probably. go all the way back, and, and then it was certainly five four Democratic for a very long time. Listen, you know th this is what gerrymandering does, and and you know to the victor goes the spoils. If you think of Nashville, we call it the donut effect. The center is blue and there's this big red donut. Well, what the Republicans were effective doing is carving those pizza-shaped slices <laughs> and bringing in those red portions of suburban Nashville, those out counties, and it killed Davidson County in terms of having a blue vote and a blue vote in Congress. It does not do our state well, okay, it, to be that unbalanced. Uh, because at the end of the day, we do need things from the federal government, and at least two-thirds, likely, maybe all, uh, by the time that this show airs, will, uh, of the federal government will be controlled by Democrats. It'd be nice to have a friend or two in Washington, D.C. to advocate. I Don't think it's really just following up on that. John Rose and Mark Green and now Andy Ogles all represent parts of Davidson County. And I can guarantee you, they don't look like Nashville. <laughs> no. Donuts and pizza on a Sunday morning sounds good, John. <laughs> uh, Don, you wanted to mention something else at the national level, and then I'll let John Right. In. Listen, I mean, I, I, I was certainly worried about the red wave. Susan was uh, touting it the, before <laughs> election, and woo-hoo, woo-hoo. It was at best a pink splash. Look, the, the Democrats, when this show airs again, likely have retained the Senate. Of course, they still have the White House of President Biden, he's feeling very good. The House, we may not know the House for a while with California out there, but the Democrats definitely overperformed, outperformed. I think late on Tuesday night, you know, we sent around in our friendly little group text that should never see the light of day <laughs> that I said, everybody on MSNBC is peeing themselves with glee. <laughs> yeah. And it really, it really was a remarkable night for the Democrats in a year in an election cycle that usually doesn't bode well for the incumbent party. John, what else stood out to you about election night 2022? You're talking about nationwide? Any, anywhere, local, state, national. Uh, Florida. Yeah. Florida is what stuck yeah. out to me. Uh, I was talking to Bill Lyons on, um, I guess it was the day after, and we were talking about what happened, and he said the only red wave really was in Florida, and that, that was the case. Florida yeah. looks to me like this juggernaut coming down the bay, and I'm like, uh-oh, look well, out for Florida. It's not purple anymore, and it's got a lot of electoral votes when you come to 2024. In the two minutes we have left, I want to talk about Governor Bill Lee, because he won re-election, uh, and he is going to be there for another four years. When he walks into the legislature, this new session, Susan, does he have a bunch of allies or a bunch of people who say, hey, I want your job in four years? <laughs> There's a lot of people down there that would like to have his job in four years. 2026 is going to see five or six or ten people that are going to run for governor. Just from your he, side. He, from our side, because he's term limited. Uh, I think Governor Lee uh, most likely has served, will serve his last term. Whether he has national ambitions, we'll find out. But, you know, right now he's dealing. His wife has been ill, and so I think he is really focused on that more than he is anything else right now. When the session starts, we'll find out what his priorities are. But I want to mention a follow-up to this. Governor Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. uh, won by 20 points, and he carried Miami-Dade County, which 
rarely happens for a Republican. I think you're going to see him, you are seeing him emerge as the Republican star. Oh, only a minute left, Don. Uh, your thoughts on Governor Lee and any other closing thoughts? Well, I, I think the interesting thing is we, we joked about this with Governor then Governor Haslam when uh, the state achieved the supermajority and said that might be your worst nightmare. And it really has given the legislature a lot more power in Tennessee. Uh, and it proved to be difficult for Governor Lee. It's going to prove to be more difficult for Governor Lee, even though he's more experienced, probably in the second term, where they know he's the, quote, lame duck, and you've got Cameron Sexton and others with great power, probably looking at his job. The one thing I will say, keeping on the reality show theme, the biggest loser on Tuesday night was Donald Trump. And, and your guy, Ron DeSantis, maybe uh, exhibit one in that I think Trump really lost a lot of standing and prestige on Tuesday night. Question is, does he know it? <laughs> Appreciate you watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning on Inside Tennessee.